Would the office have worked with Seth Rogen playing one of the most memorable characters? Or would it have been super bad? TV and movie history could have looked very different had these actors nailed these auditions. After E. L. James's Fifty Shades of Grey novels dominated the sales charts and captured the pop culture zeitgeist, the time came for the salacious book series to be turned into a blockbuster movie. Of course, with all the raunchiness mentioned in the story, the roles of Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele would require high levels of nudity and boldness from the actors selected for the parts. Even so, there were many performers who were ready to strip down for the next big Hollywood franchise. Pretty Little Liars star Lucy Hale disclosed to Associated Press that she auditioned for the part of Anastasia. She explained, It wasn't actual scenes from the movie, but it was a very sexually forward monologue, and I didn't really even know what I was saying in the audition. While the role of Anastasia went to Dakota Johnson, Hale appreciated the auditioning experience, as it forced her to step out of her comfort zone and challenge herself as a performer. At times, being an actor is similar to any other job in the sense that if someone is too good at something, they will never get promoted. That's the reality that John Krasinski lived for many years. While the role of Jim Halpert in The Office may have turned him into a household name, it also typecast him in the eyes of many. No matter what Krasinski tried to do, he was always seen as Jim. I don't think any of them actually know my real name. Nonetheless, during an appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, he revealed that he still took a shot at auditioning for the part of Steve Rogers in Captain America The First Avenger. At first, Krasinski joked that he stepped away after Chris Hemsworth walked in. But in all seriousness, the actor revealed that he had the opportunity to try on the Captain America suit and gave the best performance he could. Ultimately, the filmmakers decided to go with Chris Evans instead. Krasinski would eventually join the MCU when he appeared as Reed Richards in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Robert Pattinson doesn't seem to lose many roles. In fact, there's even a long-standing joke that if he and Henry Cavill audition for the same part, Pattinson will come out on top. This rings especially true considering how Pattinson reportedly beat Cavill to the roles of Cedric Diggory in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and Edward Cullen in Twilight. Yet there is one director who decided against pouring some R. Pat's magic into his film production, opting instead for a certain MCU actor. In Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Scott needs to battle seven of Ramona's exes in his quest to be with her. One of them is Lucas Lee, a jock-like character who oozes coolness. In a Vanity Fair retrospective of the 2010 film, director Edgar Wright mentioned how Pattinson auditioned for the part of Lucas, which eventually went to Chris Evans. He said, I remember it vividly. He did a much more intense read of it as well. Obviously, Robert is an incredible actor and someone who I'd love to work with now, but it was a very different take from what Chris did. For too long, Jake Gyllenhaal was seen as the almost man in Hollywood. Despite being widely regarded as one of the most talented actors of his generation, he missed out on pivotal roles because of timing or other factors outside of his control. A big one was Spider-Man. When Tobey Maguire and Sony did a dance about whether he would be back as Peter Parker for Spider-Man 2, Gyllenhaal had been in the running to replace Maguire if the actor vacated the web. He was also linked with the role of Batman in the past, with the same outcome. Yet there was an audition that Gyllenhaal lost, and it was probably for the better. Appearing on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, the actor spoke about the time he auditioned to be Frodo in The Lord of the Rings. In a hilarious recount of his audition, Gyllenhaal explained how he arrived without much knowledge of what he was supposed to do, including the accent for the character. The read required the actor to take out the One Ring and react to it. However, he didn't do much and spoke in his regular voice. Reportedly, director Peter Jackson told him to get new agents after the audition ended. A little hostile there. In 2010, Emma Stone was on her way to the top. She might not have been the A-list award-winning actor she is now, but she was attracting all the right attention thanks to her performances in Zombieland, The Rocker, and Superbad. Despite all of the positive buzz, she didn't receive a role in a film she wanted to be a part of, Alice in Wonderland. In an interview with Variety, Stone and Timothy Chalamet discussed some of the setbacks they had experienced in their careers. When Chalamet revealed he didn't get a role in Miss Peregrine, Home for Peculiar Children, Stone opened up about how she also missed out on a Tim Burton movie. She said, Tim Burton's a crusher. Oh my god, when I auditioned for Alice in Wonderland and not getting a Tim Burton movie is really devastating. While Stone didn't specify which part she auditioned for, it was likely for the lead character, Alice, a role that ultimately went to Mia Varshikovska. Marvel's Iron Fist show didn't exactly electrify viewers. There were many criticisms over the storyline and a distinct lack of fight training demonstrated by the lead star Finn Jones. When the series dropped, though, there was one major highlight – Louis Tan's turn as Joe Chang. After witnessing his performance, many fans believed Tan should have been cast as Danny Rand instead, especially considering he had auditioned for that very part. 
The goodwill put Tan on the radar of Marvel Studios, though. Considering how small the role of Cheng was, he could have easily been cast as another character in a later project. The opportunity arrived when he auditioned for the title role in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Speaking to E.T., Tan revealed his disappointment when he found out he didn't get the part. I just lost a crazy job, a really, really high caliber level job. While Tan was initially very disappointed, it wasn't all bad news. As that one door closed, another opened and welcomed him as the lead character Carl Jung in the 2021 Mortal Kombat film. It's difficult to imagine anyone else but Amelia Clarke as Daenerys Targaryen. As with any other production, though, there were other actors considered during the audition process. One of them was WandaVision star Elizabeth Olsen. During an interview with Vulture, Olsen revealed, When I first started working, I just auditioned for everything because I like auditioning, and I auditioned for Khaleesi. I forgot that. It was the most awkward audition I'd ever had. Olsen elaborated on the process, saying she read from a scene that appeared toward the end of Game of Thrones Season 1. At the time, there was uncertainty surrounding the direction of Daenerys' accent, so Olsen performed both American and British versions for the audition. In her mind, it was totally terrible, but it hasn't stopped her from becoming a fan of the show, even if she failed to be cast in it. The live-action version of Beauty and the Beast features a star-studded cast. One of the standouts in the movie is Luke Evans, who brings a boat for Gaston to life. Whether it's through song, dance, or fisticuffs, Evans cements himself as a pitch-perfect antagonist here. Before Evans received the call for the part, though, another popular British actor was in the mix. Idris Elba revealed in an interview with Jess Cagle that he personally phoned up the filmmakers for the chance to audition. As he explained, I honestly love musicals. I auditioned for Beauty and the Beast. I really did for Gaston. I called and said, listen, I want in. So somewhere they have a tape of me singing. Elba is a musician, so it should come as no surprise to anyone that he would love to take a crack at a musical. But sadly, his take on Gaston had never had a chance to come to life. For many, Star Wars is a holy grail of cinema. Everyone wants to be part of the universe in some shape or form, which is why so many famous actors cameo as stormtroopers. But one performer who wanted something a little more was Michael B. Jordan. The actor revealed he auditioned for the part of Finn in Star Wars The Force Awakens, which ultimately went to John Boyega. Speaking on Just for Variety with Mark Malkin, Jordan listed his Star Wars audition as the worst of his career. As he explained, I couldn't wrap my brain around some of the sides because you know when you're reading for these high-level projects, there's never really any specificity in the sides. Everything's like super vague. Everything is in secret. Reading through, I just couldn't connect it. I definitely bombed that one for sure. In the end, 2015 was a mixed year for Jordan. While he punched his way into the collective consciousness as the titular protagonist in Creed, he also starred as Johnny Storm in the highly publicized dud Fantastic Four. Perhaps a co-lead role in Star Wars The Force Awakens would have helped to soothe the sting from the backlash of the latter movie. Flame on. The role of Batman is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Whenever there's a new Bat movie on the horizon, rumors swirl over who is in consideration for the part. Before Ben Affleck put on the cape and cowl for Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, martial artist and actor Scott Adkins stepped up for a chance to become Gotham's protector. Footage of Adkins audition tape leaked out to the public. In the clip, the British actor recites lines from The Dark Knight Rises while sporting a goatee. The iconic look of his character, Yuri Boycott from the Undisputed film series. Adkins may not have scored the role, but his audition had the fan base discussing the possibilities. While he might not have been considered a serious candidate since he was strictly a B-movie actor at the time of casting, he certainly has the physique and martial arts prowess to bring Batman to life on the big screen. Plus, he also bears an uncanny resemblance to Affleck, something that is parodied in his film Accident Man, Hitman's Holiday. While Timothy Chalamet may be everywhere and racking up big roles nowadays, he had his fair share of failed auditions when he was rising through the Hollywood ranks. Even so, he was knocking on all the right doors and being invited into the conversation. At the 2018 Los Angeles Film Critics Association Awards, Chalamet was showered with praise for his performance in Call Me By Your Name. While collecting his award, he opened up about how he had auditioned for Spider-Man Homecoming a few years earlier. As he explained, I read twice and I left sweating in a total panic. I called my agent, Brian Sorstrom, and I said, Brian, I thought about this a lot and I have to go back and knock on that door and read again. In an effort to sway him from doing so, Sorstrom recounted the infamous story of how Sean Young put on a Catwoman costume and appeared at the studio in an attempt to convince the decision makers for Batman Returns to give her the role. That stunt backfired on Young and became a lesson of what not to do in showbiz. Ultimately, Chalamet didn't get the role, as it went to Tom Holland. 
Part of the reason that The Office is one of the most beloved sitcoms of all time is because of the cast. The chemistry is through the roof, and everyone compliments each other's character. In fact, it's the kind of show that no one could imagine being rebooted without the original cast members' involvement. Yet, the series wasn't a lightning-in-a-bottle scenario where the right people presented themselves from the start. There was a substantial casting process where many actors came in to read for the various parts on offer. One of the more interesting auditions was Seth Rogen for the role of Dwight Schrute. Rogen's audition demonstrates a different approach to Dwight than what was portrayed by Rain Wilson. Not to take anything away from Rogen's comedic sensibilities, as he is an accomplished actor and comedian in his own right, but it's tough to imagine anyone other than Wilson as Dwight. Judging by Rogen's audition, he would have been more of a passive-aggressive version of Dwight as opposed to Wilson's outright aggressive character that had manic tendencies. There's no disputing the producers and casting team made the correct choice here. Scarlett Johansson is one of the most prominent actors in the world. She's equally adept at starring in blockbusters like the MCU films as she is in Oscar bait dramas such as Marriage Story. What some people may forget about Johansson is that she had been acting since she was quite young. Some of her earlier roles include parts in 1994's North and 1997's Home Alone 3. However, she could have had a mega blockbuster in her early filmography had events turned out differently. Johansson auditioned for the role of Judy Shepard in Joe Johnston's Jumanji, but she lost out to fellow child star Kirsten Dunst, who was on a scorching hot streak coming off Interview with the Vampire and Little Women. While it might have taken Johansson a little longer than Dunst to hit the A-list league in Hollywood, she eventually did so in the 2000s. Laura Dern revealed it was Nicolas Cage who convinced her to speak to director Steven Spielberg about Jurassic Park. She eventually landed the role of Dr. Ellie Sattler, which she revisited in several sequels. However, she wasn't the only actor approached for the part. Audition tapes have since surfaced showcasing the likes of Helen Hunt and Gwyneth Paltrow reading for Ellie. Paltrow may have thought that she had a foot in the door since she worked with Spielberg a few years earlier playing the younger version of Wendy Darling in Hook. Unfortunately for the Iron Man actor, it wasn't meant to be. Instead, it was Dern who received the opportunity to scream bloody murder and run away from those pesky velociraptors in Jurassic Park. Run! Ellie! Ron Howard's backdraft boasts a superb cast, including Kurt Russell, William Baldwin, Jennifer Jason Lee, and Robert De Niro. And yet, it almost had another big-name actor in the form of Brad Pitt. In fact, if he had gotten the part, it could very well have kickstarted his ascension to the upper echelons of Hollywood much sooner. In the early 1990s, Pitt was building up steam with small parts wherever he could, but the opportunity to audition for the role of Brian McCaffrey in Backdraft allowed him to sink his teeth into something meatier. He wasn't the only notable name competing for the part either. Audition tapes have revealed that both Robert Downey Jr. and Keanu Reeves read for the role as well, but in the end, Howard and his team went with Baldwin instead. Clueless didn't only announce the arrival of Alicia Silverstone as a star, but it also introduced the world to Jeremy Sisto, who plays Elton in the movie. After the success of Clueless, the young cast was in high demand, and the opportunity started to roll in for them. While Silverstone was cast as Batgirl in Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin, Sisto received the opportunity to audition for the part of Jack Dawson in James Cameron's 1997 tearjerker Titanic. The role of Jack went to Leonardo DiCaprio in the end. However, footage of Sisto's screen test with Kate Winslet has since been released. The actor has also not been shy to discuss the experience when asked about it. He told Live with Kelly and Ryan, Yeah, it's one, it's of, those... one of my failures. It's a, it's what? a good failure. After this confession, he went on to explain, I test screened for Leonardo's role. It was a big deal. It was like a full set, wardrobe and makeup. It was very nerve-wracking. I was 19. Who wouldn't want to be Spider-Man? When the opportunity to portray Marvel's web slinger presented itself after Sony decided to reboot the series in the 2010s, every actor under the age of 30 begged their agent to get them an audition for The Amazing Spider-Man. One actor determined to get the gig was the Hunger Games star Josh Hutcherson. And well, it wasn't exactly a total failure of an audition. In fact, he was pretty close to landing the role. After being shortlisted for the part, Hutchison spoke to Entertainment Weekly about what it meant to him to even be a contender. He said, The fact that I'm on the list with some of the people that are on the list, I'm amazed that they're putting me on that short list. I think it's really cool to be considered by the media to be in the same category as all those other people that are being considered. It's really a privilege. Ultimately, Andrew Garfield was cast as Spider-Man. That said, Hutchison's screen test leaked onto the internet, showcasing his version of Peter Parker engaging in combat with a group of assailants. It's neat and exciting footage, proving he would have also made an excellent choice for the part. Bob Odenkirk is best known as shady lawyer Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, but he started his career in TV comedy. 
writing and starring in shows like Mr. Show and The Ben Stiller Show. Expectedly, when The Office was searching for actors to portray the lead role of Michael Scott, Odenkirk auditioned for the part and was taken extremely seriously as a candidate. When the sitcom was presented to NBC, Odenkirk was actually presented as Michael. However, the producers were still hopeful that their main pick, Steve Carell, would become available. As luck would have it and bad news for Odenkirk, Carell's sitcom Come to Papa received the act, and he was able to take the part of Michael. It doesn't appear as if there are any sour grapes about how matters turned out, though. Since Odenkirk did appear in the ninth season of The Office as Mark Franks, a riff on Michael's character, 